All right, Shalom. This is Power Thumb. Back with another lesson through the Spirit. And in this lesson, I want to get into the chariots. All right. So before I begin, I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shah, Bashem, Rekha, Kadash. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone, that rule well, who continue to teach us this gospel through the Spirit. And Shalom to the Akim that labor in the gospel in truth, faith, and sincerity. All right. Shalom. Like I said, this would be a lesson over the chariots, which the world ignorantly know and call UFOs or whatever, you know, they call them. You know, some people have no idea what they are. Some people believe, I don't know, of Area 51, so-called white men building spaceships that can move faster than the speed of light, which he's not doing. All right. It's all types of bugged out stuff, but brothers have made countless, you know, a lot of lessons over this, but... Um, I'm going to make a quick video over the chariots because this year it was a chariot sighting in my hometown, East Texas. All right, in center, in uh, in, in the town is called Center, uh, Texas, and this is a a video. I mean, a picture right here of a chariot close to the road, which this woman in a city in a uh, country town she took a picture of it and you can kind of see the outline you can kind of see the outline of it you know and it, i believe it ends right there but that's that's a pretty nice pretty nice size you know they had it on facebook but esau took all the all the um articles down and they took this picture down and she also took this picture as well. This, well, this is another person took this picture. All right, this is in the sky. You know, he's in broad daylight. And this one is at night. So, yeah, man, the chariots are coming. These are the signs of the time where our deliverance is coming. And the scriptures tell us that Yahweh Shai and the angels are coming to deliver the elect of the nation of Israel, which the nation of Israel consists of these so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. And they, while they're coming to deliver, they're also coming to destroy uh, Esau, mainly Esau, all right, because he's ruling the current world, all right, and he's the wicked. So let's read this Matthew 24. And let's read, uh, let's see... 29, it says, well, let's read 30. Let's start at 30. It says, and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven, which is Yahweh And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. All right. So the tribes of the earth are going to mourn. You have different tribes and nations in the earth. 18. All right. Nations. And only one nation is going to be granted, all right, deliverance. That's the nation of Israel. The nation that I, the Son of Man, which is Yahweh Shah, came out of, all right? And not the whole nation of Israel, but the elect. But the rest of the world and the tribes of the earth, they're going to mourn. Why? Because those chariots are coming for death, all right? Shooting fire, all right? It says... And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So the glory part is self-explanatory. When people see these chariots, they marvel at them. They gaze at them. They, they at all because they, they fast, they hover. They do everything Esau, the so-called white man, wish he could do with his uh, planes. All right. They, they. Aerodynamic, all right. They they don't turn. They just go whichever direction, all right. And they're powerful. You know they they're powerful, all right. They shoot lasers. Okay, so let's get precept over the the um, what the clouds are. So this is Psalms. This is Psalms one hundred four and three, real quick. Just the precept um, and give understanding what the clouds mean. Or, or, or what the clouds are. This is Psalms 104 and 3. It says, Who led the beams of his chariots in the waters? 
who maketh the clouds his chariots, who walketh upon the wings of the earth. Now, see, we see, we see here now that the clouds are referred to as chariots. All right, you have actual clouds, but then you have chariots that can resemble clouds. All right, they can resemble a cloud. So let's get another example. All right, because this is not a far-fetched idea that the chariots, the people call you with O's, are real. Elisha seen one. All right. So this is, let's see, second two, two, twelve. All right, let's start at eight, and then we're going to read down to twelve. This is second Kings two and eight. It said, Elisha took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they two went over on dry ground. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing, nevertheless. If thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. So let's see how Elijah is going to be taken from Elisha. It says, and it came to pass as they still w went on and talked that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, horses of fire, and parted them asunder. And Elisha went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and cried, my father, my father, the chariots, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces, see? And just like Elijah got took on the cloud, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh shot on the world, ignorantly called Jesus. He got took also on the cloud. All right. So let's get that. This is Acts 1 and uh, 9. It says, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which were angels, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, while stand ye gazing up into heaven, this same Yahweh, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then return they. So that's the point right there. Let me read that again. It says, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Yahweh, which is taken up from you in the heaven, shall come so in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. That's why the scripture said the tribes of the earth shall mourn because of him. He's coming back on those chariots, on those clouds. All right. To wreak havoc in, let's get at uh, Revelation one and seven and this now this is john john which the uh scholars call the revelator he was an apostle of yahweh shah sentenced to uh punishment on the island of patmos and here is where our lord yahweh was dealing with all right um he was dealing with um john the revelator Okay, giving them vision. So this is a vision. This is Revelation 1 and 7. It says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, and all the kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so. Amen. Now this is a revelation of Yahweh Shah, see? Revelation 1 and 1. The revelation of Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, which the Most High gave unto him, to show unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. So what John is seeing is what the vision that the angel gave unto him. And he's seeing our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, on a cloud. Okay? Yahweh Shai said it out of his own mouth. So let's go back to Matthew 24 and let's read. 30, and it says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and the sky, and then all the tribes of the earth shall and all the tribes of the earth mourn, and all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. 
and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. So as you've seen, Yahweh shall de destroying the other heathen nations. All right, because they're going to be gathered over there in the so-called Middle East in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. All right, where they're going to be having World War Three. Now, when they have this World War Three, they're going to see Yahweh shot and the angels. All right, coming in heaven, they're going to turn and fight against them. All right, and as they turn and fight, they're going to be destroyed. Okay, this is the war in heaven that the scriptures speak of. So, let's go back to well, let's get another precept. Uh, second Ezra 13 and I started one. It says, and it came to pass after seven days, I dreamed a dream by night. Now this Ezra is, all right, a priest of Israel and a prophet, of course. And it says, and lo, there arose a wind from the sea that had moved all the waves thereof. And I beheld and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. Those thousands of heaven are the angels, all right. In the chariots, and when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. All right, we we see the things that's going to be under him of all the tribes of the earth, and whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice. Now, as I said before, the chariots are not only coming to deliver the elect, but they're coming to destroy. All right, the other heathen nations. That's why they're going to mourn. Because the voice that went out of his mouth is the, is the fire, all right, the laser beams, okay? Like as the earth fell it when it filled the fire. So like when grass, when the sun come up, the grass wither away. Hey, symbolic of these, uh, these other nations, all right, and their armies. It says, and after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. Talking about these militaries. All right. These different nations and their militaries. But I beheld and lo. He had graven himself a great mountain and flew upon it. But I would have seen the region or place where out he, the hill was graven. And I could not. And after this I beheld and lo. So. Ezra is seeing Yahweh on a big ship. And he thought it was a mountain. But. He was like, I couldn't see where the mountain was cut off it. It was a ship he was on. But I would have seen the region or place where out the hill was graven, and I could not. And after this, I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid, yet durst fight. So these militaries, they're going to be afraid. All right, these men and women, they're going to be terrified, but the Most High is going to put in their spirit to fight still. It says, and lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, neither held sword, nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth, out of the chariot's mouth, as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. Now, this is going to be a devastating destruction for my lawyer, Hawasha, who they claim that love everybody. Our Lord Yahweh is not coming to love, but he's coming to bring weeping in the gnashing of the teeth. It says, 11, and they were all mixed together, the blast, the fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon a multitude which was prepared to fight. For example, you see these different uh, movies, like with Will Smith on it, and they're fighting against the ships, and they blasting these ships to uh, hell and back. Um... And you see, like, uh, War of the Worlds with Tom Cruise in it. And the tripods come up and they're killing the people, turning to dust. This is just, those movies are a small example, very small example of the de the devastating destruction that our Lord Yahweh Shah is going to bring to the earth. All right, and this time is coming soon. And the chariots being seen this up close. It's a nothing but a sign that we're coming into that time, man. All right, it's soon. We have wars and rumors of wars. You have the mark of the beast, which the RFID chip is being promoted. All right, don't take the chip. All right, um, famine of bread, famine of food is on the rise. Um, 
seditions among men. All of these are signs of the times we're coming into. All right. And this will be one of the last prophecies to take place. This would be this will take place during World War Three. Now you have talks of war between Iran and America all on the news, but we died in a time where the third war's war is just gonna go full bloom and take off. Alright, we still have a couple prophecies to be fulfilled before World War Three happened. And you have these Edomites on these uh news outlets, they they scared, you know, they feared Trump retaliating, all right, to Iran's attacks on the two U.S. bases in Iraq, all right, but calm down, all right, calm down, and uh, be happy your daughter eat them for just, for a few more minutes, man, all right, because the Third World War is not going to pop off just yet, all right, It says, uh, 11, it says, And fell with violence upon a multitude which was prepared to fight, and burnt them up every one, so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude nothing was to be perceived or seen, but only dust and smell of smoke. All right, when I saw this, I was afraid. So, Yahweh Shah coming back to smoke, you fools, man. All right, all you that fought against Jerusalem, all right, Yahweh Shah is coming to plead the cause of the Israelites, the so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and he's going to smoke you fools, man. All right, it says, and after where I saw, I in this. Yeah, so that's pretty much it, you know. Our Lord Yahweh Shah is coming, coming with the chariots to destroy you other nations and to deliver the Israelites, man. All right. To deliver the Israelites. Let's read. Uh, this is a. Uh, let's see. Isaiah. 26. And 10. It says. Uh, that's not it. Let's see. 26 and. 20. So like it says. Come my people. The Israelites. Enter into thy chambers, which are the chariots, and shut the doors behind thee. How thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation pass away. Because simultaneously, when the chariots come, all right, you're going to have the nuclear war. The chariots are going to destroy and come gather up the elect right before the nuclear war take place, all right, to deliver the elect above the firmament of the earth. All right, and we and we're gonna watch and look down upon the earth. Okay, that's gotta get the precept. Revelation chapter twelve. Let's see. I believe it's fifteen. All right. Yep. Revelation. Uh, fifteen and one. It says, and I saw another sign in heaven. Great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is fulfilled the wrath of the heavenly Father. So it's a lot of, it's a lot of uh, lamentations and woes in the scriptures. All right, a lot of wrath and destruction. Man, don't get our Lord messed up in His Son. Our Lord is a man of war, and He coming to bring the war to you other nations, man, because you think you in control, but you're not. Verse two, it says, and I saw. As it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast. Now the beast is NATO in the EU, and the sea of glass mingled with fire is the earth. All right, America look is going to be engulfed in fire. All right, in different parts of the world, but mainly in America. It says over his image and over his mark, the mark of the beast over his image, which is his um. His democracy, his whole system, all right, and over the number of his name, and over his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of the heavenly Father, all right. So standing on the sea of glass, not literally, but they're gonna be hovering over the earth. It's gonna look like a sea of glass, all right. Cause it's gonna be on fire, man. All right, it's gonna be on fire to cleanse this place, not to be destroyed, but to cleanse it. Because New Jerusalem gonna come down. Alright. Let's uh skip over to Revelation twelve. Let's read here. 
was talking about that war in heaven. Let's, let's see. See these notes, tracking Esau. Yep. Brought down out of power. Yep. So, in Revelation 12 and 7, it says, And there was war in heaven. Now, we've been reading the skies and the the, the, the waters. Our Lord Yahweh is coming from the heavens. All right. So, this is the war between the other nations. We read that in um, 2 Ezra 13. It says, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. Now, the Michael and the angels are the actual angels. All right. It says, and fought against the dragon Esau and his army, all right? His um, uh, war planes, okay, if you will. And the dragon, the dragon Esau fought with his angels, all right? And prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven, all right? Found any more in heaven, meaning heaven is condition played out on the earth. Esau is in heaven living good. Israelites are in hell, all right? We live in bad in the earth, okay? It says, and prevail not. So Esau and his military is not going to defeat Yahawashah, Michael, and the rest of their angels when they come back, all right? That's silly to believe, but you have Trump talking about a space force, space force and weaponizing the, uh, space. That's all for this a war that will take part in heaven between the Edomites, the so-called white people, all right, and the the heathen nations as well, but mainly the Edomites, all right. That's the two star players. The other heathen nations are like um, extras in a movie, and between Yahweh Shah and the angels and the men of the Lord. Okay, it says fight in, in his angels and prevail not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. Heaven meaning. Esau is going to be taken out of rulership, man. And the great dragon was cast out. That's Esau and the old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole earth. You read that, you already know it's talking about Esau. He spread his lies across the whole world, man. Deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him, man. So don't believe that, um, that Christian... Uh, theology or um, Greek mythology of being cast out and Satan ruling. Look, this is just talking about real situations using um, uh, what can I say? Metaphors. All right, using metaphors and similitudes. All right, the scriptures are in code. So, Lord, willing this was edifying into the elect. All right. So, Kahala, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shah, Bashim, Rakal Kadash, double honest to the apostles, Shalom, to the the brothers that preach this gospel in true faith and sincerity around the four corners of the earth, Shalom.